welcome to the Filmcast's review of Evil Dead Rise. Joining us today for our review, Max Ivry is a freelance writer who has done audio commentaries for Blu-rays from companies like Arrow, Kino Lorber, and Imprint. In May, you'll be able to hear him on the Blu-ray commentary for Michael Mann's Black Hat. And in August, he'll be releasing a book called A Masterpiece in Disarray, David Lynch's Dune, and Oral History, now available for pre-order. Max Ivry, welcome back to the Filmcast. Thank you, guys. How are you doing? Oh wow! Off to a <laughs> off to an not, amazing not start. start there, Max. Yeah. Off to an amazing start, Max. Yeah, really... well, it's, th- th- uh, that book. That book has taken forever. I'm so happy it's coming out. And um, I, you know, like I talked to David Lynch. I talked to Kyle McLaughlin. It's going to be just a ball for that. Sounds wild for fans. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is actually, funnily enough, a connection between the Evil Dead franchise and David Lynch's Dune. Mm-hmm. Um, right. In uh, Evil Dead Two, if you remember the scene at the end where ash falls from the sky and he's with all the medieval people um there is a monk among the uh the, the crowd he's actually right next to sam raimi mm-hmm. dressed as a knight and the, the, this monk costume was actually taken from storage uh from <laughs> david lynch's dude uh because de Laurentiis produced uh yeah. Dino de Laurentiis produced the gift that movies. keeps on giving that movie mm-hmm. yeah you know de Laurentiis <laughs> uh, knows how to save a dime amazing well mm-hmm. We are here today to talk about Evil Dead Rise. I'm going to read the plot summary from IMDb. A twisted tale of two estranged sisters whose reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh-possessing demons, thrusting them into a primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. Now, Max, on the Filmcast and on the Filmcast After Dark in particular, patreon.com slash filmpodcast, we have been re-watching all the Evil Dead movies. Tell us a little bit about your relationship to these movies before we dive into your thoughts on Evil Dead Rise and whether it's a worthy successor. Sure. Well, it, it actually, it interested me because I've been listening a little bit to, to you guys, and uh, I understand you'd never seen any of these movies, right, Dave? No, not, not to completion until very recently, yeah. That's so, amazing. I'm yeah, so was, happy for you. It was so... uh, it was really delightful to, to revisit the, or visit them for the first time for me yeah. at patreon.com slash film podcast. Um, Taking them back to school, basically, yeah. <laughs> Evil yeah. Well, what, What's remarkable about the movies is uh, if you compare... Like, I, you know, Evil Dead 1 and 2 are very similar movies. But mm-hmm. uh, if you compare Evil Dead 1 and 2 versus Army of Darkness versus Evil Dead 2013, um, the tones, I would say, are pretty different between the three of them. Like, the, each, each of those movies is such a distinct tone. And it's rare to have a franchise uh, that has wildly divergent tones in each of the movies, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I love the fact that... Uh... Um, in in each film of the original trilogies is basically a reboot. Uh, I mean, like they, they literally they literally <laughs> yeah, remake yeah. they remake the previous film in the opening <laughs> few minutes of each movie. Yes, uh, potentially including this one, which we'll discuss in a bit. But <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's right. But, but anyway, uh, yeah. So y- you were a fan of these movies. It sounds like it sounds like this is an important part of your cinematic upbringing. Yeah, so I mean, I came to them, I guess, relatively late in the game in my twenties when I was in college. I mean, I know a lot of horror fans. You know, th- these are these are like touchstone movies. These are like, you know, they're they, they, they're in their veins. Yeah, everything like, pulled from these for the last from the eighties and nineties. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah, they're seminal films for sure. And um, yeah, I always felt a little guilty for the fact that I didn't discover them in, until later because they're definitely in my like wheelhouse like I, like my favorite directors are guys like terry gilliam jean-pierre Genet, you know like guys with a, with a real distinct like sort of visual stamp and uh, you know sam raimi is one of those guys and the fact that he was able to make three as you said wildly divergent um movies you know i i, I just i love that and um yeah uh i i, I can't say that I've been as big of a fan of these last two though. Mm, okay. Well, let's talk about evil dead rise, which I do think is the closest in, uh, aesthetics and feel and tone to Feta Alvarez's 2013 evil dead. Uh, right. I mean, do we all, I think we mm-hmm. all agree. Yes. With that. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. So given that, uh, what did you think of evil dead rise, Max Avery? Uh, I'm going to get really unscientific. <laughs> about this <laughs> not what i wanted mm. not what i wanted from this franchise wow i like I, I like the goofiness 
Like mm-hmm. no one I know has ever said, oh, scariest movie I ever saw, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. Nobody's ever said that. Mm-hmm. The archness and irony of those films uh, is, is what I liked. Like the lore of the Deadites is never meant to be taken seriously. Uh, even in the first movie, it's, it's over the top. It's tongue in cheek. They're generic evil bad guys. Like they're saying stuff like, I'll swallow your soul. And, oh my God. And, you know, and it's like, and, and in those movies, that's pitch perfect. But in the new one, like when the Deadites say that, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Mm, you know, mm. it's it's fan service mm-hmm. that shows just how off the overall tone is by comparing it to the movies I actually like. You know, frankly, when they say those things, it, it starts to feel like a fan film. You know, like, you know, it, you know, it, it actually it feels a little like a Cloverfield type thing where they found like an unrelated spec script right, and just right. grafted some evil dead crap onto it. Like hmm. it could have been like a kid finds a generic evil book, you know, not the Necronomicon or an evil Fabergé egg that unleashes demons or an evil vacuum cleaner. Like the look and tone of it. owe much more to sort of the contemporary Bloomhouse. Yeah, conjuring right. style of horror than to say I can't Wayne. wait for the haunted Dyson movie. I feel like that's <laughs> don't don't let that slip, Max. Like don't no, give us no, too no, much I'm, about that. That's your script. I'm I'm pitching it to uh, to Bloomhouse right now. But like that grim and serious tone, like like I, I saw that Lee Cronin, the director, like his jumping off points were Rosemary's Baby and Seven. Mm-hmm, I was like, mm-hmm. that's just so fucking pedestrian. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I pitch scripts sometimes. Wow. And my friends in the industry are always like, say it's blankety blank meets seven. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. what if I think seven is lame and played out? Like, why does everything have to look and feel like a 30 year old movie by an MTV video director? No offense, David Fincher. I mean, Jeez, you're just yeah. you're kind of just dropping. Body even blows. seven Body is catching sprays right now. I'm just like, <laughs> I love I, seven. I I, I, mean, I I was literally, yeah. I'm not joking. Literally, I was driving down my street yesterday, and I was thinking, man, seven's a great movie. Yeah. Th- this Get, is getting some seven vibes from this. I'm hundred yeah. percent serious uh, <laughs> about that thought. I, I really like that movie. So to hear you kind of say it's played out, many people have attempted to imitate it poorly. I would yes. agree with you there. Yes, yes, um, yeah, yeah. But, like, like you know, like uh, what was it? Uh, like like Mama had that look. The pro prodigy had that same mm. st- you know everything's doused in shadows everything's grim and desaturated like give me something fun and colorful you know like startling imaginative like you can do that in a horror movie like the one i thought did it really great was uh john dies at the end like that was fun mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's the tone i want like something willfully absurd you know for a movie that costs less than 20 million dollars evil dead rise feels like it's been spreadsheeted and algorithmed to death you know it's like there's no renegade spirit to this movie. Um, wow. I did enjoy a f- I enjoyed a few things. <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, so, but I, I mean, here's the thing, though. Um, is I do think that after 2013's Evil Dead, which was the most financially successful Evil Dead film of yeah. all of them. To to be clear, none of Raimi's Evil Dead movies actually made much money in theaters, right? <laughs> right. Like they, yeah. Right. Yeah. So after that movie, like I do feel like this movie, if you liked the 2013 one, you will appreciate what this movie is trying to bring. Would you at least concede that much, Max? Yeah, if I if, if I liked the 2013 yeah. one, I would agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Which it sounds like you 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 weren't a fan because yeah, and and no. you know our our colleague Jeff Kanata, who's not here today, he had basically the exact same thoughts. Uh, you know, when we were discussing the remake, is is it is completely absent any of the fun and mm-hmm. whimsy of mm-hmm. those original movies, right? Um, yeah. So, are there before we move on to Devendra, who I'm very curious to hear his thoughts on, like. Are you just in general not a fan of this type of horror movie? So you don't like the Saw movies or Hostel or, you know, any of those kinds of movies? Or I, Well, I don't, no, I, I'm not a fan of the Saws or, or any of the torture porn stuff. And, like, gore is not, like, I'm not really, like, one of those guys with, like, the thousand-yard stare that's just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to kill this movie. Like, <laughs> How you bloody know, like, is I, it? It's yeah. not good, my, that's good not David my Chen thing. impression. Good David Chen yeah, impression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, like, I... Like I liked the change in venue. Like I thought that was kind of a step up from, you know, the 2013 one, which is just kind of a bankrupt, you know, remake of, you know, this is like a step backward. This is at least moving it forward, kind of baby steps. You know, like the dead deadites can be anywhere. I mean, their apartment they're in is enormous by New York City standards. Man, right, Devendra? 
It's uh, <laughs> so this is technically LA, even though everybody it's LA, yeah. it's, it is LA. Everybody sounds I... vaguely Australian or something too. So it's like, mm, oh yeah. yeah, oh my god, everybody sounds like they're from Australia. Yeah, or yeah. I, I did yeah. notice. I was like, yes, these these people are theoretically low income, but their house is massive. Like every it's huge, huge everyone has a, yeah. their own like room with all this space in it that they can configure in their own way. Yeah. So I, I yeah, dream about right. three bedroom apartments. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. So, I have well, a I'm, three bedroom apartment. It, it's. This is this was bigger. this is why Max will never leave Brooklyn. It's like I've been <laughs> visiting Max's apartment since 2009, yeah. and yeah. you have somehow landed the best one in Brooklyn. So congrats. yeah, but it, but I I agree with uh, I agree with you, David. It's like it, yeah, like shouldn't there be like an auto tune they can do in post to get rid of the accents? No. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I I didn't bring up the the accents, but just uh, just say I, they know. they immigrated here or something. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, but like the, you know, like the, I think. Uh, you know, obviously it's over. They overdo the the sort of dark haunted mansion lighting. Clearly, the Fincher influence coming in. I just I just wish they'd done something more interesting and less contained with the setting. Like mm-hmm, have it mm-hmm. go to different floors. There are other have, people in apartment buildings. Yeah, more have there than be more two kooky, neighbors. Yeah, you know, kook, more kooky neighbors, please. Yeah, like I again, something more akin to like Delicatessen. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I, I thought, uh, you know, Alyssa Sutherland is great though. Mm-hmm. She's fantastic. You know, like she's really scary. She gives a very physical performance. She's scary without the makeup, honestly. But she's got <laughs> wow. Okay. But like, That's just being a mom, Max. It's yeah. being a mom to three kids <laughs> yeah. and just being yeah. like, I don't know how I'm surviving here. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, All right. I, I, yeah. Well, Divin your hard or I am really curious. Mm-hmm. What did you think of Evil Dead Rise? I think you were really looking forward to this sure. movie. Yeah, I was, was really I, looking forward yeah. to it. I will say my favorite conversations with Max Avery is when I completely disagree with him. <laughs> On yes. every level. So yes. this is strapping for one of those. Um, I will also note here, maybe for Jeff, if he ever listens to this, but, uh, you know, to to paraphrase uh, Grizzly Man, Jeff Kanata must never see this movie. <laughs> never. Good I, God. He, he, this is he did exactly not, what will destroy him. He did yeah. not yeah. plan to sit this one out. Yeah. Uh, it, it just some, something came up that made it so that we couldn't schedule this review with him. I think that and, worked out for him. But, but in retrospect, yeah. it worked out really well because I do not, I cannot imagine he would have enjoyed this film. This so, is not a Jeff Kanata movie. Yeah. I will say, I freaking love this movie. And I, I see what you're saying, Max. And I hear this from a lot of Sam Raimi fans. And the thing is, like, I just, I don't know. I think it's, I've lived through a lot of remakes. We've all lived through so many remakes and different things. And I, try not to be too precious about certain things, you know? Like, I think even Sam Raimi doesn't have a consistent idea of what an Evil Dead movie is. I think the first movie has some funny parts, but it's because they had no money. They just kind of had to (laughs) bullshit their way through a lot of it, you know? And what really works about the first movie is how, like, for me, it did terrify me when I saw that as a kid. Um, I talked to a lot of people, like, there are instances in that first movie which are just horrifying because it would always play on cable and you would sometimes wake up like in the middle of the night being you leave your TV on. It's just like deadites just trying to destroy these people in the cabin. And that is a visceral movie. I think it hits me in gnarly ways too. And I think this movie really gets that. And it even, I think it even heightens the tension more because it does something that I don't think any of the evil dead movies actually did for me. At least Sam Raimi's Um, I actually care about these people. I care about this family. And, I agree. Yeah. I agree with Devendra. Yeah, that's so. a ma- that's a major upgrade because it's like, <laughs> sure, a couple of a couple of idiot twenty somethings go to cabin, they die. They don't have distinctive personalities or anything. We kind of accepted that in the first two movies. Ash is a star. I get it. We're here for Ash. We're here for the interplay between that and Ash. This movie is kind of unrelenting in terms of who it goes after. I feel bad for the mom. I feel bad like the initial deadite who's on the poster. So that's not a spoiler. But I feel bad for her. And her situation is just like, I just, I kind of want things to work out for this lady. Like, I totally get where she is coming from, from her. Like, her life is not going so well right now. It's kind of tough. And they're a couple weeks away from being evicted. This movie doesn't care. This movie doesn't really give you that sort of sense of um, win that you'd want some characters to get. Like, some, some people do by the end, and we'll talk about that. But I do think, like, this movie is brutal. And it's kind of like... It does things I think a lot of more modern horror movies certainly doesn't don't do. Um, nobody is really safe in this, and I also think like the overall like the character structure is great. I like the family dynamic. I care more because it's a family trying to stay together rather than four random friends. Um, I think the set pieces are fantastic. Like once it gets going, Lee Cronin is just like, I got these ideas. I would cheese grater. All these different things that, you know, you don't really, we haven't seen in the Evil Dead movies before. Of course, the chainsaw appears. And I do feel also like these movies are almost mythical 
in their status. Like there will always be a survivor covered in blood. There will always be a chainsaw or something like there will always be the ritual that gets it all started. And I kind of like that too. Like that's, I think the uh, Fede Alvarez remake is a lot weaker because I, I think most of those actors just weren't great and the script wasn't great, but that movie it did do something else with the formula of the first evil Dead. I think this does even more. Um, and I like the idea. I like the idea of different uh, directors coming at evil dead as a concept and just trying to play with it. And I think even Sam Raimi is really thinking about this and he's really thoughtful about it. Uh, he did a great interview with the empire podcast and, you know, he talks about like, he really wanted Fede Alvarez to do a sequel. He got too big. He was doing other things. He is really thoughtful and purposeful about who is tackling this property. And right. I think it was uh, the last movie by Lee Cronin, uh, Hole in, The Hole in the Ground, which I haven't seen, but that trailer also looked really, really intriguing, just really spoke to Sam Raimi. So I think, you know, he is he is bestowing the the power of evil dead to these people and he's handpicking them and choosing them. And I think there is there's a lot of like distinctive ideas and distinctive visuals here like this doesn't feel like a run-of-the-mill horror movie to me i realized the day after i saw this that i like my back was just tensed like my body was tensed up because i was just like oh man what is going to happen next uh throughout this entire movie and i wasn't really scared by it but it definitely delivered a great visceral mm -hmm. sense of like unease and mm -hmm. you know just really disturbed me which is kind of what i want I think yeah. that's kind of what the first Evil Dead did do very well. Do you know? Do you know what the most disturbing thing about seeing this movie was? Mm -hmm. it was uh, I saw it in an Alamo Draft House, and I was just so like, in just like horrified by how much food people leave behind. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, some guy just ordered like a plate of chicken wings and ate no I hate chicken it. wings. I hate it. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you did, know, they, did they have like Evil Dead, like really bloody chicken wing? Like that would be that would be a really get your face all red while you're watching <laughs> Evil Dead. Yeah, that would be great. To to uh, to put Devendra's statement at the end there a different way, Max. Mm -hmm. Who are we, aka who are you, to question the direction that Sam Raimi the wants God, to take his Sam own franchise? Raimi. Yes, right. Like like it's not like Sam Raimi people... who, has ne who has never lent his name or produced a terrible movie in his life. <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> wow. Max is just coming for everyone today. Okay. <laughs> well, guys, with Jeff Kanata not here, I think it's best if I attempt to sum up my thoughts on Evil Dead Rise oh in the form of a limerick. Its setup is just as cockamamie, and sometimes it feels a bit samey, but family dynamics, great gore and plot mechanics make this a worthy successor to Raimi. Nice. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I really like this movie. I thought it was certainly something that delivered on the gore. And it's something that if you enjoyed the 2013 Evil Dead, you're going to like this one a lot, I think. I will um, say, even I, if you if you didn't like that one, because of the thin characters, there's also a good chance you would like this. Yeah, so, but like yeah. just in terms of like the feel and look and, and just like, mm -hmm. it's just you're watching people's bodies get contorted and destroyed and yep. taken apart and ripped apart you know like that's what you spend most of the movie doing in both movies right and so uh so I, that's why i feel like it's like if you like that movie i think you'll have a really mm -hmm, good time mm -hmm. with this uh, you know I, I don't think you guys are giving enough credit to i'm giving uh, you all the, the credit the yes. well the change in scenery uh, it's uh, transplanting this to a building like a building with other characters is actually a really big step for the evil dead movies, you know, like, and there are some yeah, yeah. It, with different rooms. Like I, I know it's, you know, and with a family instead of just 20, like these are each like substantially yeah. different. And I think every one of these different elements adds something to the movie. I, I agree. Um, I will just quickly say like, I, I love apartment movies. I love especially mm -hmm. horror movies set in apartments. It's like mm -hmm. they didn't quite go too far because we see mm -hmm. two neighbors. We see basically four different neighbors, a couple of kids and, you know, mm -hmm. the buff guy and an old dude. And yeah, the thing it. about an apartment is that it's a community, right? There's a if somebody's making noise, if somebody's like having an exorcism or a <laughs> demonic attack in one floor, your downstairs neighbor will be like, what the hell is going on up there? Yeah, you there's, the, there's the, no the lady dead. Like banging a yeah. broom onto the from the. So I, I would have liked somewhere that maybe more of like a Candyman dynamic of like the community of the building. Sam, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think Sam Raimi like just would have been um, if he had translated this. Like I think he would have. He tends to get like broader character dynamics, right? Mm -hmm. But Max, I will say, 
you live in a potentially haunted um apartment building i feel like you yeah. would be you would be totally down with this it's, uh, max lives in a, a, re- a renovated old hospital yes and you know you know some shit went down i might be in there. the morgue right now yeah because you have the basement so yeah yeah that's rough. Yeah. No, it, yeah. And I mean, there, there is definitely like, you know, when you live in an older place, it's like, it was funny. One time I, I, I took a, a, a girl here and she's like, oh, is it, does, isn't, it, isn't it weird that people like died in your building? I'm like, I think people die in every building. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Every building. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, I, I think uh, the apartment building does add a lot to it. Like, mm-hmm, the family mm-hmm. stuff adds a lot to it. As Devinger put it, the most important thing is there's actually characters who I actually care about. The the movie actually gives at least one of the characters an arc, which is not something you can say for most of the Evil Dead movies, I would argue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and so for, for those reasons alone, uh, I, I'm a fan of this movie, but also just like it's a very well-executed horror film. The set pieces are all really scary. There's stuff that makes you really uncomfortable, sound design that's really great. Uh, gory things, body parts being ripped apart that are really creepy, uh, and um, and actually like some decent plot mechanics. And what I mean by mm-hmm. that is, in the previous movies, it has been, hey, you got to read these words from the book, you know, to to put the thing away. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm not going to say what the solution is in this movie, but it actually makes sense in this yeah. movie. Like, uh, although once again, makes- characters are like, everyone's like, you shouldn't mess with that. <laughs> and somebody's like, nah, I'm, no, it's, oh, it's fine. I'm just gonna go into this, dive into this. What can I will? Happen? I will also say yeah. this: this this version of the Necronomicon is probably my favorite mm-hmm. version in terms of the look of it. I think mm-hmm. this is uh, the best one. The last one was also decent, but it had all this terrible writing with like red pen in the margins that I was like, why are you ruining a perfectly good book of the yeah. like that? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's an interesting factoid: uh, the yeah. guy reading the Necronomicon words on the uh, tape. In the first movie is uh, Bob Dorian, the uh, the old host of American Movie Classics. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And we'll say this in spoilers, but another voice pops up in this tape. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Any, any other thoughts before we get to spoilers or shall we do it? Yeah. I mean, uh, all, all good. I will say all good. But Max, I, w- I want you because we're going to be praising this movie a lot. So I want you to have like your yeah. thoughts out there. Yeah you're, yeah. you're welcome to rebut anything that we have said. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm well aware at this point that I'm in the deep minority. On, I'm, I'm, I'm this, I've this, never I haven't seen a horror movie rate this so high. Yeah. Lot. Tomatoes in a long, long time. Or, or sorry, yeah. no, the the yeah. silent majority. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's get into spoilers. All right, let's do spoilers for Evil Dead Rise starting right now. All right, so Devendra, who is that voice you're referring to that that pops up in Evil Dead Rise? Oh, Bruce Campbell is on the on the record. Oh, he's that's he's awesome. one of yeah. the he's one of the priests like shouting to the to the main guy like don't yeah. t- put it away. I, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I think he says it 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 it, it was buried for a reason or something yeah. like that, or it's called something the Book like of that. the Dead for a reason or something. Yeah, and I read yeah. he also did he did people like to do little bits of sound effects in these movies, so like I think that there was something involving an eyeball being chomped. That's Bruce Campbell team. Oh yeah. Okay. So so that I will say, I wasn't a fan of because I think in is it Evil Dead two that someone swallows an eyeball basically yes. right yeah yeah um, that was by accident and and, you know. and, and it yeah. was kind of like you know again that that movie has a a relatively jokey zany mm-hmm. tone and when it happens in this movie it just feels completely out of place in my opinion like mm-hmm. I mean because it, it's among the many things that get ripped open in this movie. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's just, it's not, it's not the idea of the person's eyeball getting, mm-hmm, it's the idea mm-hmm. of it going into someone's mouth as kind of like a, right, right. that's like a gag, literally, yeah, fi- figuratively. Yeah. And it's, um, it just doesn't, didn't work for me in this movie. But mm-hmm. uh, here, let's talk about this. So now that we're in spoiler territory, what did you think of the very opening of this movie, which pays clear homage to yeah. the Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2 and Evil Dead, you best, know, in terms uh, of- Best cabin of the franchise, right? The nice A-frame. Yeah, frame, I, I definitely stayed in Airbnbs. Looking. I've stayed in Airbnbs yes. like that. Yeah, I yeah. see them listed all the time. Yeah. I, I did not uh, care for this. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I did not like the opening because uh, it, it gives away the ending, right? So, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, we, <laughs> we all know that there's going to be probably another Evil Dead movie if this one does well, but... You don't need to telegraph it. And, and so the whole time I'm thinking to myself, okay, yeah. well, whatever these people yes. go through, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, I think that, that is the know. overreaching message we get from the Evil Dead movies, too. Is like, it never stops. Like, once you're in yeah. it, 
you're in it. Sure, forever. sure, but I would have yeah, liked yeah, yeah. to find that out at the end of the movie at the instead end. of at the beginning of the movie. I, I think but, it, I, but I know yeah. they wanted to do the homage, right? Like yes. it's like they yes. want to trick you into being like, "Hey, this is like the other Evil Dead movies." But uh, it's a I again like the Scream movies. I like the way when you change up the formula, right? Like mm-hmm. when when your intro is doing something new and different, like self-contained five minute Evil Dead movie. Also, the opening camera shot, which is yeah, a, drone like a drone shot. It is a drone shot. But I was also thinking to myself when I was watching it, I was like, yeah. "Oh, they can use drones to do they this now." And then it literally was it. a drone, right? That's so fun. that was funny. Yeah, That's that funny. funny. And yeah. I also think um, yeah. all the little tidbits. Um, there, I forget like what the what the actual like uh, what was the thing that hurt the person in the in the opening, but the perhaps one of the best like title cards I've seen in yeah. a very long time. I just like I wanted to clap. That's pretty that. good. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, pretty, yeah. That's pretty when the title comes yeah. up and she's like rising out of the water, that's pretty yeah. good. Um, if only the rest of the movie had the energy of the first 15 mm. seconds of the credits. Wow. <laughs> wow. I think uh, when the woman rips the other, like when one of the yes, girls the scalp, rips the other the scalping. girl's scalp, yeah. the idea that that girl would be able to then crawl like a quarter mile from the cabin to the dock made absolutely no sense. Like if you did, if that happened to you, you would be in shock and then you would die shortly afterwards, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you'd be just so, like, ow. Ow. <laughs> you might say Ooh. ow, yeah. So I, I wasn't a huge fan, but Devinger, it sounds like you like the opening. It worked for you. I, yeah. I think it's a I, I think it was a lot of fun. I, I like the fact that it is a weird thing to go into, like, because once you know once this movie ends, like that stuff still happens. So they did set up the potential sequels, but I kind of want to see where this goes. I hope Lee Cronin like gets to keep going in this universe because these characters are compelling. I think um, Beth is is the main person we're following. Like she has a really interesting arc, and I kind of want to see what the what the evil what the dead do, especially if they get if what Max is this is evil dead involuntarily to your statements? <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah. Your positive statements about the movie, Devendra. But uh, uh, <laughs> give like what if what if they were just like here here's actual money. Here's actual, you know, 50 million plus to do a, a, a larger scale Evil Dead movie. I feel like Lee Cronin would deliver something really interesting. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. We've never we've never gotten that. Mm-hmm. We've never gotten a big budget Evil Dead movie. I mean, Army of Darkness. Well, we had relatively... Doctor Strange. And yeah, yeah, that's true. We matters. had Doctor Strange. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Army of Darkness is like relatively large in scale, you know, with yeah. many different locations and uh, and uh, but not a very expensive so movie, I believe. But, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Max, did the opening work? It sounds like the opening med- might have actually worked for you, and you didn't yeah, like the rest I, of the movie. Yeah, I, I kind of like that it, uh, you know, you come in expecting it to be a high rise movie or, or an urban movie, and it, and it's and it starts, you know, back at a cabin. Um, I was a little, I was honestly, I was a little confused because I thought that the girl that's possessed there was the the lead girl, uh, uh, Lily Sullivan. I thought, right. I thought, <laughs> and I, I, so that. And then I was like, "Oh mm-hmm. no, that couldn't be her." And then, um, but uh, no, I mean, it was, it was, it was fine. I mean, like I said, like I, I wasn't like, I didn't start like rolling my eyes and groaning until about the middle of the movie because it was just that's when it was just it just sort of started to become a slog mm-hmm. for me because I realized, oh, this is going to be like pretty witless. This is going to be just like a lot of gore without any real like 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 gleeful like. Mm-hmm you know, imagination to it. Yeah. I, I mean, I think one of the challenges of the evil dead movies for me has always been the lack of rules, mm-hmm. you know, um, who, who, why do they possess the people they possess? Mm-hmm. How can you transfer possession? Is it just go through the air? Do you have to touch well, there, them? There's always some like bodily fluid. It's a bite or you, you inhale some of the vomit or something like it. it there's an exchange of fluids. Wasn't that is there one guy vomit. in like the second one where like, the dead eye just like kind of put their hand yeah. on his face yeah. and like put that yeah. was it. I mean, okay, you, get so, some, you get some, you know, some stuff in there. On yeah, that okay, hand. but the, yeah. but the initial when the initial yes. person she doesn't need to be touched by anything. It no. just you know it's it's a presence that comes. The presence her. finds that person and then spreads outwards. Yeah. But then they obviously spend a lot of time toying with these people, and it's like, mm-hmm. are, are they trying to terrify them or are they just trying to kill them? You know, it doesn't really make any sense it's to just me. Chaos, but, man. Just but what chaos. I appreciated about this movie is. Uh, first of all, I like the whole aesthetic of the whole uh, mm-hmm. record player and how it wasn't spinning at an RPM that would actually make sense. So they had to like physically turn it, and they kept doing that throughout the whole movie. So that was that kid like, has such a killer DJ setup. Like what yeah. a what a spoiled that, kid, man. That was cool. Uh, yeah. And then they, 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 there is actually a solution for how to purge yourself of the deadite situation, which is 
you must dismember them and grind all of their body parts into bits. That's kind yeah. of what... There, there was a solution. That's like the Highlander dead, solution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. And uh, and I, I, that seemed like, oh, yeah, that that's logical. That makes sense. Because you've seen how unstoppable this force is. And so it's like the only solution is cut their bodies up into tiny bits so they can't hurt you anymore. And I'm like, make oh, some hamburger sense. meat. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Again... You know, at the very end, the spirit comes out and infects that other girl. But like, whatever, you know, <laughs> they you didn't can't... do the cer- they didn't do any ceremony to send it back to another dimension or whatever. Yes, so I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that, but like, uh, dismembering it wasn't enough. So yep. you know, whatever. I, the, the the lack of rules has always kind of bothered because it's like, what is the objective here if the ghost can just get into you at any time it wants? Mm-hmm, you know, it's mm-hmm. what what are, we, what are we even doing here? Um, <laughs> But at Have the same some time, fun times, Dave. Yeah, That's but at the same doing. time, it's like, hey, some of these yeah. are really, really great set pieces. The cheese grater stuff, the tattoo stuff, like it's all just those are great gags. Um, I love the scene when uh she's kind of looking through the little porthole, and you see like mm-hmm. a whole action scene play out in the port. The, love the it door thing. That's amazing. I know? love that they they do set up that angle before too, so you're not too surprised by it. Like there's there's like a lot of fun inventive stuff, and also that in that scene is where the first kid is killed. And then I was like, oh, man, this movie is just there weren't kids in Evil Dead movies before. Yeah. And that that does hit different now. It does hit a little hard. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Not, it's not I afraid guess. to kill. This movie is not afraid yeah. to kill kids. You know, and that's and that kid's just sitting there in the back. <laughs> like, man, <laughs> he's not. He's I've, yeah. I've, yeah. I feel really bad for the little girl who, who you know, yeah. who survives this like the, the girl in Aliens, too. I, I, aliens. I was yeah. impressed by. Can, can, I, can I talk yeah. about that? Like, Please go he, ahead. Max. Go Devendra ahead. just brought up something which was like a huge pet peeve for mm-hmm. me which is mm-hmm. this movie it's aliens it's not 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 subtle yeah uh reference to the shining and aliens mm-hmm. like 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 there's a, the elevator that opens up with the blood there's even yeah. the, they do the shot where from underneath where she's at the door like that's also from the shining yeah. and then they do the whole thing of like the little girl running under the truck and it's like you know like she might as well have said get away from her you bitch like you know it's like it's, and i'm just like <laughs> again like how fucking lame <laughs> Is that like it's so bush league? It's like if I made a game. Max, you you want them to also replicate the witty the witty tone of the original Sam Raimi stuff. So, but that's I mean, like Sam, I, I, Ra- Sam yeah. Raimi is what is Army of Darkness made literally explicit reference to multiple other like the day the earth stood still and like yeah 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 all that stuff. You know, fun. Mm, I don't know. It's like <laughs> to me, it's like it's like if I made a gangster movie and had a character say, "I'll make him an offer he can't refuse." Get it? It's from The Godfather, the most I would famous gangster you, movie. If you ever. made a gangster movie, Sam, I would. <laughs> Like Max, I feel like you would uh you would do you would do your own spin on that. Like like a sort of underhanded reference to it. And I do feel like a lot of the 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 uh, bloody uh, door the, the it, elevator's yeah. opening was def- very direct, but it's, I think a lot of it's it is playing like it's playing bop. to the cheap seats. Yeah. It, it's 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 just it's too easy. It's too easy. I oh. <laughs> think you are wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I I I would agree with you about the elevator. Like that was pretty yeah. blatant. And I was thinking to myself as I was watching it. Oh well, at least in this movie, it's motivated by the plot. And then I'm like, no, yeah. no, that doesn't make any sense. Like, well, it, there, there's a reason it happens. It just yeah. no, but it's like yeah. it's not like blood has been a big um, sort of theme throughout the movie. It's just like, oh, it just starts filling up with blood, and that's it. Uh, it just comes out of nowhere. There's no real build up to it or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I will, I will, I'm a little bit sympathetic to you there, but I, I don't think there's anything wrong with a director yeah. homaging certain shots from other movies. Um, and I guess you could say it could be subtler, but he, they don't call it out. They don't say somebody doesn't, the, the little girl doesn't sit up from the blood and say, Hey, just like from the shining, like that doesn't mm-hmm. happen in this movie, <laughs> you know? So I just feel like you're going way too hard on this movie for, uh, having some visual similar that are clearly I, I have had many of these arguments with Max, yeah, clearly so, trying to yeah. pay respect to these <laughs> other directors. I, I don't, yeah. I don't agree with that, but let me ask you this question, Max. Like, mm-hmm. is there mm-hmm. anything about the movie that you actually liked, you know, any, any craft in the movie that you actually appreciated? Um, okay. So like I said, I, I, I liked the lead, uh, Ashley, I thought she was, she was great. Um, and I, I liked, I agree with you about, you know, the, uh, changing the setting up. I thought that was a good move. You know, it's why I would rate this one higher than, uh, Fede's movie. Um, and, uh, and I, I like Fede too. I, I actually, I, I saw him work, uh, in Budapest making Don't Breathe. And then I had the honor of, sitting next to him, watch the finished movie with an audience. And like, Amazing. he got so excited when the 
turkey baster scene happen. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> but um, the one thing, the, uh, there, there was one thing I thought was really cool. Um, but then, like a- after the movie, it had a stank on it for me. And so let me explain: mm-hmm. <laughs> is the um, uh, uh, Morgan Davis as Danny? I thought it was cool that they just had a uh, trans, you know, a, a trans character mm-hmm. uh, or just an actor, you know, a trans actor playing uh you know uh that that role and they didn't make a thing about it like you know when it when the sister was making a you know a a protest sign like she could have been making like a trans rights sign but no it's it's something about the environmentalism or something Mm -hmm. and it's like you know it's again like they, they didn't draw attention to it they just cast him great but like um the thing that got me that i started thinking about at uh after it was over was like uh Gabriel Eccles as Bridget, like her look suggests either like kind of lesbian or non-binary or at very least non-normative female presentation. And so like, and like she's the protester. She's all about feminism and everything. And uh, I just think it's interesting that those two characters become evil. And then is the one cisgender kid, Cassie, mm-hmm. that survives. Mm-hmm. So it's like you could are you could even argue that the evil is all Danny's fault, like he like he unleashed it. So it's like, is that the filmmakers kind of coding things for the cheap seats, trying to like kind of have their cake and eat it too? Like I assume there are a lot of part in the expression uh, podunk dumb shits who are fans of this franchise and like see Ash as like an aspirational figure and not the numb skull that he is. But like, <laughs> would you would that kind of subtle transphobia play to that contingent? I don't know. I'm not here to white knight for anyone. It's not my place. Yeah. I just want to know if what you guys thought about that. It's a, uh, I mean, I definitely, I think about that. Like whenever anybody, you know, from any subgroup, like who could be harmed in the, in that portrayal, like uh, appears in this movie. I think what happens is that everybody gets fucked in this movie. Like every, mm-hmm. like the kids early on, like everybody is just kind of totaled by this whole thing. So I didn't, that didn't fully register with me, but you know, so somebody could have an issue with that. I could see that. Yeah, mm. I, I could see it being an issue too. Um, at the same time, it's like uh, should should trans characters be exempt from being victims in horror movies? You know, right. I, I don't know. I don't know that anyone's making that argument, but um, it's it's worth uh, considering, Max. So I feel. I feel. I will say, I still feel for this whole thing. Like I think back on this movie, I'm like, man, I if only that kid didn't do, it didn't like play those damn records. Like if only, right, right. if only this one, if only they got out in time, like I, sure. I just really like this family because they are also clearly like a family that's kind of reeling for their father just left. Like they were about to be evicted. The mom is like clearly just like, just trying to deal with what she can. Yeah. And I could totally understand her too. And the kids aren't fully like vibing with her either too. Like that sort of like resistance from one of the daughters, like you're not, you're not doing our laundry properly. There's a lot going on, and I just feel bad for a lot of these characters because it's like there there's a humanity to them that wasn't in the other movies, to be honest. Like the, those other yeah. folks I, felt I like stock and, characters, yeah. And we even got a subplot with uh, the character of uh, Beth, played by mm-hmm. Lily Sullivan, uh, where her whole thing is, yeah. My sense is she she thinks of herself as a, a screw up and not ready for responsibility and throughout the course of the movie learns how to become a mom right that's kind of this is another metaphor for motherhood yeah it's it's another metaphor for motherhood and yeah it it is i don't think it's like the best executed version of this that Mm -hmm. i've seen but it is at least a i would argue a competently executed version Mm -hmm. of this where through the course of their adventures um she learns something about herself and those around her and um, her and, entire and family the, may die, but she learned something. Yeah, <laughs> and these and are again, things again that, could yeah. could be interpreted as a uh, a pro life <laughs> a pro life stance. Like, you know, like I always, I'm always like I always. Hey, the guy. I, don't, I don't think the the existence of children should just be taken. I don't. The pro life people cannot just have that. Kids, kids can be okay. kids can be okay. All right. It's what, fine. What, what was that movie where they where they where they can't talk because the aliens will hear them? What was that called? There's there two of them. Um, Quiet Place. Quiet, Quiet Place. Quiet Place. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was the guy watching the Quiet Place, just being like, abort, 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 abort. <laughs> abort. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because yeah, that that was not the universe to bring a baby into. No, for sure. Nor for is sure. this one. Yeah. Um, but uh, that that I mean that brings up something for me, which is just like, you know, like the one of the 
big elements of this movie, the sort of the big um, twist, which which they've talked about, I think, even in pre-publicity, is that um, they're sort of cementing that all the movies are part of the same universe and that they're, they're, there's not one book. There's actually three books. Right. There's the one from the Sam Raimi movies. There's the one from the remake. And then there's this one. When you say um, they, what do you mean by that? What is the they? producers? They're, they're produ- okay, and, but and, it, and in the movie itself, yeah, yeah. like they say, how, how is it in the movie? Where is it in the movie? Can you explain they're, they're that? on the, um, on the record that they play one of uh-huh. the priests is like, there's three books. There's three oh, books. Also, we see three books in uh, yeah. Army of Darkness too. I, I almost wonder if like that sort of thing was related or just a gag in Army of Darkness. Yeah, I thought that was but, just a oh, gag, yeah. but, but okay. Yeah. So there's three books. There's the, the one from the, um, Last, which where are the three books from again? Which from the there's the one from the Sam Raimi, the next the ne- one they call the Necronomicon. There's the one from the remake, 20, Evil Dead twenty thirteen. Yeah, and then there's there's there's, there's this one. one. Okay, yeah, yeah. and it's it, it cinematic even looks universe brewing. So, so, huh. so, so, yeah. so theoretically, they all take place like theoretically, they can all take place in the same universe. Then, in that, right? In that yeah, okay. but and and like, so that's my question is like, is an Evil Dead crossover movie with Bruce Campbell, mm-hmm. Jane Levy, and Lily Sullivan, and some little kid, and also a baby, maybe really something we want to see. I mean, hey, that's we don't know what's going to happen. Bruce Campbell has also said like he has basically hung up the chainsaw because he did three seasons of that TV show. Yeah, you know, so I don't, I don't know if he's even physically like wants to do the stuff anymore. But man, especially with Sam, Sam Raimi, smacking him around. Yeah, yeah. But if Sam Raimi got the green light to do. Let's uh, let's unite some of the Evil Dead's. I think I think we're gonna forget all about the Fide Alvarez movie, to be honest. But unite, you know, the Ash universe with this one and give it to Sam Raimi or at least some sort of co-production. That would be fun as hell. I would. Yeah. I would. I see mean, that. last yeah. I heard, Jane Levy is not super psyched about the horror genre in general. Yeah. I mean, Sullivan's character Beth doesn't. To me, I mean, I know you like her to enjoy, but like mm-hmm. she, she didn't have much of a personality. She's just kind of like a video game character. Like she mm-hmm. just acts the way the plot needs her to act in that moment. Um, like it'll just be these two grim, traumatized women, and then Ash probably making snide, sexist comments. Yep. To yep. Them. Ash, not a great dude right now. <laughs> yeah, what a what a what a really weird set of characters to have survived these movies. Uh, yep. I mean, I or, say- or they could just they could just maybe just keep making more Evil Dead movies with hot leads you know like evil mm-hmm. dead at coachella evil dead <laughs> in an office building evil dead on a spacex evil flight, dead whatever. in a city let's go yeah. a real city not just yeah. one floor of an apartment building <laughs> yeah. do, do it the scream six way film it in a you know vancouver or montreal <laughs> or whatever montreal. um the uh one of the things that this movie does continue the trend of is though uh this movie continues to make evil dead movies look like hell to film mm-hmm. and what i mean by that is particularly towards the end when there's this whole elevator full of blood, apparently what was it? 1700 gallons of blood was used for this movie. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Lily Sullivan is just covered with blood for the rem- the last like good 15, 20 yeah. minutes of this movie. That's the that blood imagery you want. And it's, it's, just, it's just like every day. I'm sure yeah. it took her weeks to film those sequences. And it's just every day she comes to work. They got to drench her with blood. I'm sure it's extremely uncomfortable. Um, but Think about the, looks... the little girl too. Like, I, yeah. I, I feel like, how do you keep that kid's also safe and also like sane while making this like horrific thing while a homunculus of her family like chases them around a garage. I, I, I am love so that curious. creature, by the way. Yeah. I, I, I am so curious because most of the shots with a little girl, uh, I felt like could have been achieved right. by using separate. like a body double or someone separate or something like that. Mm-hmm. Little girl, by the way, uh, Cassie played by Nell Fisher. Who, <laughs> adorable. Um, you know, yeah. Adorable. Very, very precocious. You know, but she doesn't get that many lines in the movie. So she's not that annoying. Um, but <laughs> my, my, my daughter would have opened that door for the mom. She would have um, done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Every, yeah, I think that's every how, kid that's would. That's how a kid would act. That, that's the yeah. success. That's the success of the movie, in my opinion, is that girl opened that door and I wasn't annoyed by it because I was I thought I thought to myself, that's something that a normal kid would this do. This is true. Situation. This is true. Yeah. They survived the Dave test. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then but the, there. So I was thinking to myself the whole time. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, how did they prevent this person from seeing horrible atrocities? Yeah. And the one that yeah. was most questionable to me was when she shoves like a wooden stake through that girl's skull uh her sister's skull i think oh yeah uh, it came out just, of nowhere where did yeah, that thing come from it was yeah. she made that at the beginning right yeah, she it made that like at the beginning stake, yeah and yeah. then she put the head on how top convenient of it. how yeah. convenient <laughs> yeah um but, <laughs> but, also, but I was like, like i was just like i, was just like, I don't <laughs> know how they filmed this you could without her that seeing part. a yeah. thing going through someone's skull like hey, i found a bunch of the, old the records in the in the parking <laughs> garage good thing i have two turntables <laughs> <laughs> wow well max i sense you didn't really enjoy the movie and that's unfortunate um, but i just it just it just wasn't what i wanted you yeah. know yeah. did like, you see I, the tv series max because that okay, is what so, you want so 
I watched the first episode. This it's is good. How, this is how much of a picky asshole I. This is how much of a picky asshole I am. Uh-huh. I watched the first episode, directed by Sam Raimi. Directed to by be Sam clear. Raimi. Exactly. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, and then I watched the second episode, and I realized the first episode had like three times the budget of the rest yeah, of the show. Yeah. It, it, and, it I'm just, and the rest of the show is not directed by Sam Raimi. I'm like, ugh, not worth my time. That's it's fun. It's it I is. Mean, it's, fun. it's like so what, if what, what, want, what I'm basically saying is I, I really yeah. I just want I, I want original recipe. You know, uh, Max is never happy. I think that's yeah. uh, mm-hmm. that's what really what it comes down to. But that show is fun. Like it is yeah. fun, even though the budget does go way down for the rest of it. But Raimi pops up, I think, for some future episodes too. Yeah. Okay. What, what are some horror films that you you recommend recently, Max? Is there anything that you you know just so, to give us a better sense of what your taste is? Um, what my taste is? Well, I mean, like I. I find myself increasingly this retreating into uh, 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 older shit, like just because. I mean, Max, you yeah. you would host Vincent Price movie parties. Yeah, sure I, ho- I host like, that. That I is host, that yeah. is the level we're dealing with right here. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, like you know, somebody asked me like like what's a what's a movie that I um I I, I, rec- I recommend like uh, I, there's a really great like Australian movie from 1982 called next of kin that nobody talks about nobody's uh-huh. seen it it's like i it's have amazing. seen that movie, I have seen that movie. Uh, isn't that a movie amazing i mean i was barely sentient when i oh, saw did you see it. it in a marathon or something <laughs> just i uh, saw it when i was like a kid you know so oh, i barely okay. knew what was going on but yeah yeah but yeah, yes, yeah. patrick swayze right no 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 different oh. movie like i said okay. nobody's seen this it's, it's from 1982 it's an Australian movie. It's uh, it, like it takes place at, at okay, like, I, I an old seen, folks' home. I have not seen that one. I have not <laughs> yeah. seen that one. It's a horror, horror movie. It takes place in an old folks' home. It's 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 incredibly stylish, incredibly brilliant. Like uh, you know, another movie I recommend when people ask me to recommend them horror movies, I recommend this movie from 1974 called Chosen Survivors, hmm. which is like it's a, it's a movie about a, a, a there's like a, a, an apocalyptic event, like a like a nuclear war. And they put like all these people, like you know, football players, scientists, a uh, uh, this, a uh, that, in a bunker underground, and um, and then uh, like halfway through the movie, they realize that inside this underground bunker, the vents are full of vampire bats. Love it, <laughs> love it, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's just I I love crazy shit like that, and it's like when when it's like you know the Conjuring Five or whatever, like I'm just like. <sighs> There's another insidious coming. I yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm just, I'm tired of, um, you know, be, being fan wanked. Like I, I do kind of want to see like, what's the next level thing. Like, I mean, I thought it follows was fucking brilliant. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I want to see more stuff like that. I want to see more yep. stuff where, where it's like somebody coming up with an idea where you're like, how has nobody done this before? I think, did you see Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? I feel like was a good spin on no. the slasher idea. I think you would enjoy that too. Okay. Yeah. Was that, yeah, the, yeah. Was that who, who, is in, who was in that one? Pete, this one Pete with, Davidson. That's yeah. the Pete Davidson one. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought so. That's fun. All right. Well, uh, despite the fact that you didn't enjoy this movie <laughs> basically at all, and not only that, don't appear to enjoy modern horror movies <laughs> most of the time. Most of the time uh, I'm now. St- I'm still really appreciative of uh, you joining us. Max Avery is a freelance writer mm-hmm. who's done audio commentaries for Blu-rays from companies like Arrow, Kino, Lorber, and Imprint. In May, you'll be able to hear him on the Blu-ray commentary for Michael Mann's Black Hat. And in August, he'll be releasing a book called A Masterpiece in Disarray, David Lynch's Dune and Oral History, now available for pre-order. Hey, Max, thanks so much for joining us today on the Filmcast. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Oh, guys, it was my pleasure. Anytime. Yeah. Please have me back for Dune Part 2. So I can oh, trash that There you as go. Well. That actually works. Oh, God. Jeez. Okay. Well, anyway, um, at the end of the day, you know, it is still pretty impressive, despite everything Max said, that Lee Cronin, the director of Evil Dead Rise, made a movie. Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available, and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash film podcast, where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible.